It is 614. The polls officially closed this morning after a busy, busy election season, a stressful one as well. Yeah. And now the votes around the country are still being tallied up. KCTV 5 stands for you this morning. So to make sense of it all and where we stand in the process this morning, we're talking to KCTV 5 political analyst Joni Wickham. Joni, thanks so much for joining us this morning. We do first just want to get your thoughts on the race this morning, the presidential race. What surprised you the most? Did you think it was going to be this close? You know what, I think I did think it was going to be this close. What surprises me, frankly, is uh, some of the rhetoric coming out of the White House because there's still a ton of votes to be counted and we need to be very calm and make sure that all of those votes are counted. All right, Joni, and the president having an extraordinary false claim this morning saying he won the election, causing a ton of controversy online. Uh, he threatened to even go to the Supreme Court about this, saying that we need to stop counting the votes. What are the dangers of remarks like this? The dangers are long term. We don't want to do anything or hear anything from our elected officials at the top of the country, the people in leadership that that diminishes people's faith in democracy. And that's what these types of comments do. And Joni, more than 230,000 Americans have died of coronavirus. How big of a role did the coronavirus play when it came to people voting this year? Do you think uh, the most important issues were different for mail-in and early voters versus people who actually showed up at the polls? I do. I think the coronavirus had a tremendous impact on turnout, the types of people who turned out early and also what they brought uh, to the ballot box when they did cast those votes, which is why we really need to be sure that every vote is counted and that we don't draw too many, to, too many conclusions too early because there's still millions of votes out there across the country. Do you feel like the president was able to shift the narrative away from the coronavirus? Not necessarily. I, I think what he tends to do is to create divisive comments, and I think that's what you're seeing this morning. Now, Joni, another thing we want to talk about in terms of coronavirus is the local impact it had. Governor Parson, of course, keeping his seat here in Missouri. Does this show the majority of people actually handle his approval of coronavirus here in, in on this side of the state line? I think what it shows is that we are a deeply divided state, and um, I hope Governor Parson finds ways to bring Republicans and Democrats and voters in suburbia and rural Missouri and urban Missouri together. And Joni, looking ahead to the presidential race, back to that as well, because we know so many people are concerned with this this morning and have their eyes on it. What do you think the biggest thing we need to be watching right now? Do you think it's going to come down to one or two, two of those battleground states? And which do you think is the most important? I've got my eye on Pennsylvania. I'll be watching mm -hmm. Pennsylvania very closely. I also think it's interesting. This is fueling a lot of anxiety, I think, globally also. What is the impact going to be for this race? Globally, everyone is watching this. Um, it's going to really depend on how our neighbors see us and the type of leadership they see is important to the American people. This is a critical election globally. Mm -hmm, certainly is. And we'll continue following everything that happened overnight. A big thing for everyone to remember is that President Trump's claims overnight of winning the election, these votes, they could still go in his favor. It's surprising that he wanted to stop counting because mm -hmm. it could very end up either him or Biden. Uh, so keep that in mind. This is not anti-Biden or anti-Trump, this controversy and the, the, the reaction that you've seen online from so many people. All right. Thank you, Joni. We appreciate it. And we'll keep thank checking you. in with you through the rest of this day. Hopefully, I guess not through the rest of the week or weeks to come either. <laughs> Who knows how we'll long see. this is going to be. We also sat down this morning with political analyst Pete Mundo. And KCTV5 Savannah Rudisell is joining us with the, his take on those results. So, Savannah, you've been talking to Pete all morning long. What's his perspective of all of this? Yeah, that's right. Uh, right now, Joe and Gina, he is in the middle of his show. It's on KCMO Talk Radio. But we had a chance to sit down with him just a little bit earlier. And like uh, with Joni, we talked a little bit about the presidential race, but that is still too close to call. So we focused in a lot here on the Kansas and Missouri races that are unofficially decided. Now, Mundo had pointed out that uh, Missouri Governor Mike Parson, he had won almost with the identical percentage as we saw with Trump. So the support for Trump in Missouri was about the same as what we saw for Mike Parson. That's because, as expectedly, we had quite a few straight party tickets. Now, that wasn't the same kind of support in Kansas that we saw for congressional candidate Amanda Atkins. She lost to incumbent Sharice Davids by about nine percentage points. Now, Mundo has talked with Atkins before and said that she hadn't aligned her campaign quite as closely with Trump as other Republicans like Parson had so far. 
far. Now, the Kansas Senate race, that was also another one that was very closely watched between Barbara Bollier and Roger Marshall. Roger Marshall did take victory in Kansas, and I had asked Pete Mundo, considering we had so many outside donations coming into this race, really for both candidates, if he thought that if legitimately Democrats believed that this seat was one that could be flipped. Well, you're seeing some shifting around the state. Johnson County has gotten a little bluer, but then you've seen other parts of the state get redder, and that is balanced out. So you're right. There, there are different trends within the state happening, but uh, it's evening itself out because of the numbers that you just shared. So there's, there is something happening in Kansas that's certainly worth looking into, but it's, it's not happening overnight, and the shifts are enough in other parts of the state that it's offsetting what's happening here in the metro. We're going to be listening as well to KCMO Talk Radio. That's on 710 AM and 103.7 FM. We'll be listening into callers for reactions to Beat Mundo's takes as well and for more of this political analysis. Reporting live in Overland Park, Savannah Rudisell, KCTV 5 News. There's just so much information coming in minute by minute. It's nice to have some analysis this morning. Savannah, thank you.